Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So uh, <laughs> yes, I'm at another supercharger, almost back home. We're in Ashland, Virginia on our way finally to back home again. Uh, anyway, I wanted to talk briefly about something that Green the Only on Twitter posted, I think it was two days ago now, and I only caught it this morning, but I think it's really interesting. And that is that version 11 of the full self-driving beta software is in shadow mode now. So I mentioned this on my Discord channel this morning with some of the Patreon patrons, and a person actually asked me what shadow mode was, so I figured I should explain what that is, and then why it's really amazing that version 11 is in shadow mode. So anyway, so what is shadow mode? Shadow mode is a human being is driving the vehicle, and the full self-driving stack is making predictions about what should happen next. So basically, brake, accelerate, steer left, steer right, go through this intersection at this point, make make the turn, make the unprotected left-hand turn right at this moment, all that kind of stuff, right? So it'd be like, I guess, it'd be if you imagine like, so I'm sitting in the driver's seat, so I'm driving, and then there was somebody in the passenger seat who had a pretend, <laughs> I don't know, I remember like when my kids were little, they had the little fake steering wheel that they would sit in the back and they would actually pretend to drive. So if you imagine that there was somebody with an actual accelerator pedal and a brake and a steering wheel in the passenger seat, but they were not connected to the car in any way, but what they were doing was they were driving the car, right? So that would be if a human being was doing it. And then there would be a computer that registered that and registered what I as the driver did. And they melded those together and they said, okay, is the driver doing what, is the computer like the person, the passenger, the computer making the same decisions as the driver? If not, what is going on and who is the correct one in that situation? In other words, is the driver better or was the virtual driver better? Uh, so anyway, that's an interesting factor and it's really cool that it's in shadow mode because that means it must be very, very close to release because what they're doing is they're testing it and they're seeing if it's behaving properly, right? So what they can do very easily is if there's a, a, a major divergence between what the person does. So let's say that the full self-driving beta says, I should make this unprotected left turn right now and the human driver doesn't do it and waits. Then what they have to do is they have to to figure out what it is that caused that discrepancy. So you could have the, maybe the full self-driving was too aggressive. Maybe it didn't see a car that was about to turn in the way. I mean, that would be a bad thing if it didn't see that. Maybe it didn't see a pedestrian coming out. There could be a lot of reasons why it made the decision to go ahead and go virtually, of course, whereas the person didn't. So that would be a really big deal. Uh, and so anyway, shadow mode basically is just practice mode. It just puts it in and it says like, okay, let's compare this with the human drivers. All right, so why version 11? Why is that important? Version 11 is, as I have mentioned before, the one stack to rule them all. And that means that we now will have one individual stack. So currently I'm on 10.11.2, still don't have 10.12 yet. But uh, what, what happens when I drive is when I'm on the city streets, it's using full self-driving beta. When I'm in the parking lot, it's using, I don't know what the heck it's using, it sucks. So <laughs> I don't use it in the parking lot at all, but it's a different stack. And then when I'm on the highway, it's using more of a classic full self-driving, or I guess I should call it enhanced navigate on autopilot stack. So you can see the visualization change. It goes from having the cool like red lines and the yellow line in the middle and all the visualization of the cars. It moves to the older version of everything where it shows the uh, the vehicles and the other lanes and everything in much less detail than the new version does. And it's really cool. It's very interesting because there are some roads near my house that are highway speed. So they're like 65, but they have traffic lights on them. And because of the traffic lights, it won't go into the old enhanced navigation navigate on autopilot, it won't engage that mode. So it stays on full self-driving beta, even though it's at highway speeds, which is really cool because I get to see how it reacts differently. But anyway, version 11 of the software is going to be this one stack to rule them all, which means that on the regular city streets, which is where we already have full self-driving beta in parking lots, Although I'm not 100%, <laughs> I, I've not gotten absolute confirmation that parking lots are going to be included in this version, but I, I think that that's the case. And then the third part, of course, is that the highway stack is going to change. And I know that Tesla has been very, very careful about moving the highway stack to the full self-driving beta because the old version works really well. I mean, we just drove from my, my parents' house, uh, we're only partway through the trip, but we just drove 
120 miles or something like that through, you know, it, it was relatively light traffic, but Washington DC to Richmond on I-95, it's a very busy place. And it, it just does great. The only thing it does sometimes is annoyingly switch lanes and then switch back again or something. So it can be annoying about that. But aside from that, it drives very, very well, very, very safely. It's really excellent. So you, the bar is set really, really high with Enhanced Navigate on autopilot for the new software to be as good as that. So, so anyway, it's really excellent to see that version 11 is getting close enough to production ready. And my understanding is that they've been testing it since like August of last year, somewhere along those lines. So it's been a, it's been a very long time that they've been testing it. And it's quite possible that before it even comes out to the general public, it's going to be very, very close to a year having been tested. But I'm sure that they really want to get the highway excellent before they let it release into the public world. So what's going, what's happening? So Greenlee only, by the way, if you don't follow him on Twitter, you should. He's, he's very, very, he knows all the stuff. <laughs> he basically, he basically has some way of accessing the car, I think through the little plug down here on the driver's side, uh, or possibly he's pulled out the screen and he's accessed the data that way. But in any case, he's, he's plugged into what's actually going on in the uh, full self-driving computer and he can look at the code. He reverse engineers a bunch of stuff. I don't, not in a hacker kind of way, but he can just examine what is being output by the vehicle. And so he can see very, very clearly what's happening and he can see that you've got shadow mode running for various different things. So all of that's really cool. The one interesting thing about this, and I don't know the exact answer is, but I believe that this shadow mode is only operating for people who are not driving full self-driving beta. I'm not positive about that. I don't, and if you know, definitely let me know in the comments which one it is. But I believe that the full, that the shadow mode is only running for people who are running normal, um, you know, Tesla releases and I'm mixed up between numbers. <laughs> I know what the beta number is right now. But anyway, if that's the case, the interesting question then becomes what about the quality of the drivers? Because they've basically in the United States and Canada, at least they've skimmed off people with above a 95 or 96, I think is the lowest score. So, you know, you do the thing where you apply for full self-driving and it starts to rate you and your rating needs to be above 95 or 96 and maybe even closer to 100. But it's it's very, very close. Mine was like 99 when they gave it to me. But, but anyway, so you need to be at a very, very high level in order to be driving the full self-driving beta. But what that means is that if it's using the non-full self-driving beta version and doing shadow mode, you've skimmed off the people who are the absolute best drivers according to Tesla's safety score, which means that you could have somebody with like a 45 percent uh, score who's being graded against the full self-driving shadow mode beta. So that could be really interesting. So I don't know. They may, I, I think the problem is if you're driving the beta, that that's already kind of taxing the computer and it's doing its thing. And, and of course it's got to do what it needs to do. So I think that's the reason why that would be my guess at least. And like I said, I don't know, maybe it is doing shadow mode versus the full self-driving beta, but it would make sense that it's only doing this when a human is driving, not when the other version of the stack is driving. But again, I don't know all the details. Hopefully Green the Only will give us more details about this. But it's it's really cool that it's going on. I do wonder if it's only working with people who don't have the beta. Of course, there are a lot of people who didn't apply for full self-driving beta who might have a score of 97 or 98 or 100 anyway. But, but it is interesting. Like, what do you do if there's a disagreement between somebody who's got a score of like 45 and the single stack, it actually very well might be that the single stack version 11 is better <laughs> than the person who is making the decisions. So I don't know. It, it's, it'll be interesting. And hopefully what Tesla's got is a data source where they're able to go through this and examine who was in the right. Like, was the human driver actually the person who was correct about this or was the computer correct? But I think in general, it's a very, very positive sign that they've got it in shadow mode. 10.12 I mean, took a really long time to come out, but maybe 11 will come out relatively quickly on the heels of 10.12. And so maybe we'll see it as early as sometime next month. So a lot of that may depend on how well it does. But anyway, fingers crossed that it will actually be doing fantastically and we will get to see version 11 very soon and get the single stack to rule them all. And that will be very exciting news. In the meantime, we are going to get home. Uh, I was supposed to do an interview with Ross Gerber of Gerber Kawasaki 
this afternoon, but we had to change our travel plans a little bit. So I'll be talking to him tomorrow and that video will come out very shortly after I do it. So anyway, that's something to look forward to. In the meantime, everybody have a lovely day and I will talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.